Hello, I'm a Mac. And I am no one. Okay, PC, what are you doing? <laughs> Listen, friend, it's not very safe for me right now, you understand? There's a lot of spyware out there. It sneaks into your system, follows you wherever you may go. In uh, fact, take these. No, no, no. They'll keep you safe. PC, honestly, I don't need them. Really, I'm good. I run Mac OS X, so I don't have to worry about your spyware and viruses. You, you take them. Yeah, you're right. I probably should have a backup anyway. Yeah. You never saw me. Never saw who? Me, PC. Oh. Good morning. My name is John Hodgman. You saw my series of television ads there. I used to be a famous minor television personality. That is all over now. Unfortunately, they have stopped running those ads, I presume, because we sold all the computers. <laughs> what other reason could there be? They did allow me to keep the mustache, which I now employ in my current life, a much more simple, more humble life. I am merely now a common, deranged millionaire. I just travel the world going from TED conference to TED conference, <laughs> spreading my ideas and hugging Al Gore whenever possible. <laughs> it was at the first TED conference that I ever attended in 2008, a morning session like this one, uh, when a speaker named Erwin Redliner posed a very provocative question, which is, are we at risk of a nuclear attack? And the answer he gave was yes. And he went on to explain how probably within the next 10 years or so, New York City, my home, would be the target of a dirty bomb attack, and that many people would die instantaneously, but some wouldn't. And these lucky souls, if they prepared an evacuation route, a go bag, if they knew how to outrun a radiation cloud, might just escape. This was not a comfort to me. This was effing terrifying. And it was certainly a come down after the other TED talk I saw that day by the guy who had trained crows to operate vending machines. <laughs> the best. That was three years ago, and every night since then, I spent a lot of time saying, oh, I gotta get my go bag together for the dirty bomb attack. And every morning I wake up for three years, and I haven't done it. I'm still not prepared for the nuclear holocaust. Curiously, I do have a hundred trained crows in my house. <laughs> they are my butlers. Now what does this tell us about our nature? Does it prove that man is less afraid of nuclear holocaust than crows? Certainly in my case, yes. Is it that we simply ignore the things that most terrify us? Perhaps. But I am a deranged millionaire, and I am here to bring you a different message. I have specifically not planned for the nuclear holocaust because it is not going to happen. At least it will not happen before the Omega Pulse, the giant electromagnetic wave that will wipe out every hard drive on Earth on February 7th, 2012. And it certainly will not happen before the blood wave, which is a giant wave of blood that will roll over the American plains on November 9th, 2012. 2012 is going to be a very big year. You know, you've probably heard this, that the ancient Mayans stopped making calendars precisely because they believe 2012 marks the end of human history and that sometime during next year, the world will end in flood and fire, leaving only John Cusack alive. Now, you might call that insane, but I am keeping John Cusack prisoner in my home <laughs> just in case, because it's difficult to ignore the signs. In the past couple of years, we've seen the ice caps melting, we've seen extraordinary unprecedented weather events, horrible natural disasters, political unrest all over the world, Twitter riots in London, uh, drum circles on Wall Street, People are hoarding gold, which is dumb because the only currency that's going to have value soon is the beef jerky dollar. <laughs> and that's not even to mention the rise of the ancient and unspeakable gods who will soon awaken from their deathless slumber beneath the waves to come into our world and drown it with blood. Also, I just turned 40. And when you see all this crazy stuff happening, 
all in the same year, it's hard not to wonder. It's hard not to feel that there's something big on the horizon. Some people call it the end times. In ancient Norse myth, it was called Ragnarok. I prefer the term the coming global super collapse and total superpocalypse. I prefer you use the term Ragnarok. Now, you may say, that John Hodgman, he's crazy. Yeah, that's how I opened this. I said I was deranged. There goes your argument there. If you are human, though, even against your better judgment, you are probably wondering, what if he's right? And can I survive Ragnarok if slash when it comes next year? Well, let me ask you a few simple questions, which you can answer by raising your hands. I can see all of you. And when you answer my questions, try being honest for once in your life, OK? <laughs> How many of you currently live in a home that is 1,000 feet or more above sea level? Yes, 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 OK, very good. Not very many of you, unfortunately. For those of you who don't, how many of you live in a houseboat <laughs> that can float on a giant tsunami of blood? <laughs> OK, very good. Thank you, sir. Good. How many of you here have read Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert? OK, yes, quite a few of you. All right, now, how many of you who read that book, when you opened it, found inside a golden ticket giving you admission to the giant secret space arc that Oprah Winfrey is building right now as we speak here in Chicago. <laughs> no one, I'm, I'm, you should keep it a secret if you got one because they're very rare. How many of you uh, have begun to hoard your own urine? <laughs> okay, I count seven, good, that's good. How many of you are stockpiling mayonnaise? OK, look, look, look. I know everyone has their favorites between urine and mayonnaise. But in the future, you are really going to need both, OK? <laughs> urine is obviously a, a natural antiseptic with its high ammonia uh, content. Uh, it can be used to refertilize uh, nitrogen-poor soil. It's easily made at home. And it's also a, a, great, uh, a, a great test to see if people in your survival bunker are stealing your asparagus. Mayonnaise, of course, on the other hand, uh, fantastic hair conditioner. It's a good lubricant for uh, small machines. Uh, and if you leave it out in the sun for a couple of days, it becomes a handy poison. <laughs> True fact, mayonnaise is excellent for getting out urine stains. So from my point of view, <laughs> advantage mayonnaise. But you can have that argument. How many of you own a dog? Oh, boy. This does not look good. You guys are going to go first. The dogs are not your friends. The reality is that not many of you are going to make it. I'm sorry to tell you this. And I can understand why you've not made the proper preparations. Because some people feel that hoarding your urine and putting mayonnaise in your hair might make you look crazy. Which brings me back to Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> a great Chicagoan. Is she here, by the way? No? Good. Now, a lot of you are wondering, John Hodgman, how do you know that Oprah Winfrey is building a giant secret space arc here in Chicago to take the people that she thinks are good away from this place before it goes? I know because it's logical. <laughs> Think about it. Oprah Winfrey, first of all, has shown in the past a fascination with marginal, provocative, unproven theories. Psychic phenomenon, vaccines causing autism, cable television. I'm not saying she believes in these things, <laughs> but she's attracted to the weird, OK? So you know she's at least thought about Ragnarok, no? Right. Second, Oprah Winfrey has the money to build a space arc for whatever reason. Even if she doesn't believe in Ragnarok, she can do it. And three, and most important, she's got an amazing staff. These people can do anything, but the most important thing they will do is that by doing it for her, they will insulate her from the appearance of bat poop insanity. So why wouldn't Oprah Winfrey seriously get on the phone one day, talk into her speaking tube to her assistant, Susan, and say, Susan, I don't know if anything is really going to happen. It just seems like things are going in a bad direction. 
So would you just do me a favor and get to work on a space arc? Thanks. Also, I need a refill on my human stem cell tea. Of course she would say this. You'd have to be completely naive, really, to imagine that Oprah Winfrey does not have an Earth evacuation plan. Richard Branson certainly does. And so would you, if you were a deranged millionaire, as some of you may be. And I bet you're making notes right now, if you are. If I were a deranged millionaire or billionaire in 2008, when I heard Erwin Redliner tell me that my city was going to be bombed and my family was going to die, if I knew that I could text my assistant and say, hey, how about uh, getting to work on a, on a secret tunnel? I don't want to know anything about it. Just build me a tunnel. It's just in case this happens, I can get out to the uh, non-contaminated zone. Of course, I would do that. But here's the thing. I would never build that tunnel with my own hands. A, it's dirty, and B, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and I have to confess something to you right now. I don't even have a single jar of my own urine. Even though I've almost actually convinced myself, no joking, that I should. Why? What does this tell us about human nature? Well, when you think about it, the end of the world is a little like death. <laughs> we know that it's inevitable. It's going to happen sometime. And as we get older, the signs that it's approaching become more and more ominous. And in order to live our days without screaming all the time, we are forced to pretend that it's not happening. And so we don't prepare for it. We put off writing wills, we put off changing wills, we put off getting life insurance, we put off providing for our children in the proper way, we don't build survival bunkers, we don't even make the smallest pre preparations for the coming of the ancient and unspeakable gods. And why? Is it because we're afraid? Sure we are, but that can't be it. If we were just afraid, we would do it. We would prepare. I think it's something else. I think we're embarrassed. We're embarrassed by death. We're embarrassed to be seen worrying about it. We are ashamed that we're mortal. We're ashamed that we, great creatures, will either die in the best possible way, quietly, peacefully, in our sleep, a thousand years from now, based on my longevity projections for myself, <laughs> or we may be consumed by the 10,000 independent floating teeth of Shugnabut, the tooth cloud, on exactly on June 23rd, 2012. <laughs> but either way, we will be consumed. So you may heed my warning or not. You may prepare for Ragnarok or not. You may choose to be terrified, or I think there's a lot of wisdom in simply choosing not to be terrified. But please do not allow your decision of what to do to be affected by your embarrassment for thinking about it. Don't be embarrassed about your own mortality. This is a very common problem. The end of the world happens to everybody once in a while. Thank you for your kind attention.